Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, I hope we're live now. Um, we had some technical difficulties. Uh, but welcome back to our weekly webinar that occurs on the Sustainable Transportation Vermont page every Friday at noon. Um, my name is Gabby, and I'm a Sustainable Transportation Vermont intern. Um, and I'm so excited to announce our speaker for today, Ian Klepitar. Um, I'm going to give a little introduction about him before he starts presenting. And remember that at any point, you can post your comments or questions in the comment section. Um, okay, so uh, Ian is, well, let me show you on the screen. There we go. Perfect. So Ian is um, from Saratoga Springs, Vermont. He started with a local transportation organization in his hometown uh, called Bikeatoga. From there, he created a program called Bicycle Benefits 12 years ago. And this program includes both local businesses and local citizens of the community. People buy a sticker to place on their helmet uh, and then can grab discounts at participating businesses where they can when they bike there. And now this program exists in cities all over the country. Uh, Ian and I were introduced to each other last semester when we worked with another intern to widen the field of businesses that were participants of Bicycle Benefits in Burlington. Uh, and this summer we're working to put on Bicycle Bingo in Vermont. Uh, and now I will let Ian take it away. We're so excited to have you here, Ian. Um, and go ahead. Well, well thanks for uh, inviting me. I've been, I've been following the work of Sustainable Transportation Vermont. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting to see the different projects that um, the individuals that are um, involved with sustainable um, transportation Vermont are, are heading up. So um, yeah, I'll start by giving a little background of my biking experience and how I got involved in bicycle benefits. Um, it, it mainly, you know, I mainly, you know, grew up like any other suburban kid. I would, you know, parents would throw the bikes on the car. We'd go somewhere and ride bikes. Um, we'd ride in our neighborhood with our friends. It was, it was actually um, unfortunate events that got me involved in um, advocating for biking and better biking conditions. Um, having witnessed a, you know, a person getting hit by a person driving a car. Um, yes, yeah, se actually several people. Um, so I guess, you know, the, based on my, this, you know, the areas, the city leader responses and my own kind of, um, yeah, understanding of that, uh, for me, it was never something that I could really grasp that, that the fact that, you know, a person operating a motor vehicle could take the life of another person. And that was accepted as, um, yeah, I guess the cost, of, you know, the price of doing business or something that we just kind of accepted in our daily lives. So to this point, I can't really, I still have a hard time digesting that as something that's you know, okay. So I guess my thought is when some, when a person uh, gets seriously injured or, or killed by a person operating a mo motor vehicle, our streets just shut, be shut down immediately. And we should be figuring out why did this happen? Um, instead of just, you know, just letting it go and adding it to, you know, the, the statistics that, uh, that happened. So, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, um, yeah, my views are in line with, you know, many transportation advocates that, you know, one death um, is too many when you're, you know. Um, so I guess it was kind of unfortunate events that, that had me putting flyers around town that I was, that there was going to be this meeting of people that also uh, wanted to see our hometown shift. So people showed up to the meeting and then I found myself um, trying to operate a local um, group to advocate for better conditions for bike riders and walkers and people with uh, limited mobility. So, um, yeah, so I guess what I did is start learning from other cities. So, I, you know, I encourage everyone that's listening to this today, you know, if you see a, a problem in your city or in your neighborhood, um, yeah, to take it on, you know, if it really, if it hits you in a big way to take it on and say, you know, how can I, how can I do that? Or how can I help change that? And, you know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of cities in, you know, in, in this country and, and overseas, you know, in Europe primarily that are, are taking, you know, leaps and bounds.
to you know prioritize the vulnerable users in our transportation system so all the all the tools are out there we just need to incorporate those into our our own neighborhoods and our own cities so i guess what i first did was i rode a bicycle and pedestrian plan for my city which um they bike racks for my city i started a bike and walk to school day so yeah did various events that would raise awareness and trying to try to create some kind of shift in you know an auto-centric community like saratoga springs um, after two years i i somewhat got frustrated um, and what I, what I did is I decided to take, you know, a specific program, the bicycle benefits, what I, which I started and hit the road with it. So I left the organization I started, which, um, it's called bike -toga, it's still going. And I started my, my idea was, was that I could, you know, provide the bicycle benefits program to various communities and it would just be one component of, you know, a city's larger campaign and push to um, enhance bike ability and promote biking. So that was about 12 years ago. Burlington was, uh, was a city that my brother was currently living at. So we collaborated on bringing the bicycle benefits program to Burlington. And I went to Boston after that. Um, from there, I went to Madison, Wisconsin. The Trek Bicycle Corporation was, um, you know, at the time they were, they had a vision of 20 they wanted to see 20 percent of all uh urban trips done by bicycle by the year 2020 which is you know currently um so they saw the bicycle benefits as a component um to achieve that so they gave me a bicycle and and they you know indicated that madison wisconsin would be a, would be right for the for the concept so i rode to madison and um that's currently still one of the you know the that has the second number of participating businesses and the highest concentration of um, users in the city. So, and since then I've, you know, I've gone to various other communities and I've um, worked with um, bicycle advocacy groups, cities, universities, and individuals to help launch these local bicycle benefit programs. Um, yeah. And, and with that, we, you know, we try to work on other, you know, local pro, you know, get involved as much as possible and promote initiatives that local advocacy groups or cities are trying to move forward through, uh, through the outreach. Um, and it, it's nice that we're bringing the bike bingo back to Burlington. Uh, Gabby's making that happen because I think that's also a nice component. Uh, get people right in the door of participating businesses. So I guess people might ask, you know, why why the bicycle benefits? And for me, you know, it's it's nice to encourage healthy transportation, positive behavior. Um, but you know, another another component of it that's uh, very meaningful is, you know, every every part of our transportation system, you know, perfectly subsidizes driving. You know, from the from our parents you know, purchasing automobiles for us or buying us gas to, you know, um, invasions in other countries, um, taking lives in order to keep our, our gasoline cheap. Um, you know, we, we've, uh, yeah, and our roadways, you know, they, they take, you know, they make our, those that are traveling um, on foot and bike, at, you know, at, at generally a higher risk. Um, so I guess the bicycle benefits is, you know, to give back to those that are, you know, it's not the perfect program, but to give back to those, those people that are using their own power and are often, um, overlooked in our transportation system. So I guess that's, um, a big part of it. You know, if we, if we go to a local business and they've provided parking, you know, there's. There's between like 10 and 15 bicycles can fit in the same spot as a, um, as a, in the same spot that it takes to park a, an automobile. So the idea is, you know, if, if we, 
if we ride our bicycle there, you know, we're paying for the, you know, the space that it costs to um, provide a parking lot. We're paying for the asphalt. Um, you know, some parking lots are monitored. If you go to city market, they, you know, they have a, a monitor that gets paid every, you know, by the hour to manage the parking lot. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of costs involved. And if you you know if you walk or bike to the store, I guess the question is why should why should you be paying for someone else's parking? And uh, so yeah, so the idea is to give you know to give back to those people that aren't using um, such a, a precious resource um, at local businesses and also you know within our our public transportation system. So that's I guess that's kind of a bit of the history of the program. Currently, there's about 2,500 participating businesses around the country. We have programs in Seattle, Washington, Boston, Milwaukee, Madison, Asheville. So the one of the unique features of it is if you purchase your bike benefit sticker in Burlington, if you went on a longer trip or you relocated, you could you could plug in, you know, the new city that you were visiting or living at and it essentially would show you these are all the the local businesses that are that are backing up their their bike friendliness with actually a real um, a real feature by you know providing a reward to a person that bikes there so uh, Gabby do you want to you want to stop back in the room and tell us a little bit about the the bingo that you've been working on yes awesome um, so I I am an ambassador of Bicycle Benefits and Ian and I have been working this summer together um, to kind of put on Bicycle Bingo, which has happened in the last few years. Um, but this year offers a very uh, interesting, specific, you know, kind of uh, deal with COVID-19 and um, just lots of changes going on um, in our in our community and in the world. Um, and so uh, Ian and I have been working together to get businesses involved and the way that the bingo works is that once you have your sticker um, we're putting on this event which is six weeks long and uh, specific businesses already a part of bicycle benefits with, um, are now a part of the bingo and they'll be placed on a bingo card and when you bike to those specific businesses you can get a stamp once you purchase something. Um, and at the end, when you filled out the entire card, you can redeem it for specific prizes um, that are being offered by those businesses. Yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll be super fun. That was, you know, in the, in the past, we, you know, we didn't incorporate the make a purchase in the bingo, but, you know, upon putting our heads together, we are, we realized that, you know, these businesses are going through challenging times. Some of them aren't even open back up again, but you know, essentially, these are places that have supported biking in the Burlington community, and now they're, you know, experiencing challenges. So the, the idea is to, you know, give give back maybe more than we um, might have previously to these places that are, you know, if they're supporting biking, they're usually supporting other community initiatives. Um, so, yeah, and that's, you know, that's kind of... I guess you know the name of our the theme of our conversation was uh, staying on bicycles post COVID nineteen. So I, everyone that's listening is probably very familiar. That there's a huge worldwide bike boom that's happening. Um, yeah, everyone's getting back on bikes. France was even even gave their citizens something like you know hundred dollars, you know the equivalent of hundred dollars to fix up their you know their bicycles and get going. And we've seen cities of the country to create you know, safe and healthy or safe and active streets to limit the flow of motor vehicles on a lot of neighborhood streets to allow people to you know to exercise and bike and and safe um yeah and travel in a more uh, comfortable fashion a lot of these places are cities that you know wanted to move forward with um prioritizing uh, healthy transportation on our streets, but um, it hasn't been until now that, you know, given this, you know, one would say an opportunity to actually move forward with a lot of these initiatives. Um, 
Yeah, so we've seen it. Yeah, in a lot of the major cities. I, I'm not currently in Burlington. Is, um, is is Burlington doing something like this right now, Gabby? Are you are you aware? Um, I'm not aware, no. Um, but I believe that the bike community has been uh, pretty active in trying to support local bike shops and um, bike um, uh, policies and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. so. That's that's what are I'm there any, are, are there any uh, questions from any of the listeners? Yes, we are getting a few questions. Um, okay. So the first question is from Jacob Weinstein, and Jacob asks, he's another intern from Sustainable Transportation Vermont. Okay. Um, and he is curious about the process of getting businesses on board for bicycle benefits. Is it a lot of in-person meetings or cold calling or a mix? No. Ooh, excellent question. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's a mix. It's a mix of the two, you know, biz businesses, small businesses in general, um, you know, the owners, you know, oftentimes they'll do, you know, they're even, do they're doing the financing, they're managing the place, they're doing the ordering, they're doing the hiring. So they have a lot on their plate. So one thing I've noticed is that many lo local businesses want to support bicycle benefits um but it's not one of the priorities so a lot of times it yeah requires a person to stop in um sometimes multiple times I encourage them to to such of email you know then, then when i pop in they'll say oh yeah that's great we wanted to do this but haven't gotten around to it so the the enlistment rate is actually pretty high with the program so because it, you know, it benefits the businesses um, in many ways. You know, if you get, if you have, uh, if you know of a place that does bicycle benefits, when you are out on your bike, you know, you'll start thinking, oh, there's the Barrio Bakery. They do, you know, ten percent off, or you know, I got to wear my helmet to Myers because I get, you know, buy six get six. So it kind of creates like, you know, kind of a roadmap in your head of, the, you know, these are my people. These are the places that are down with bikes. Um, so yeah, I, I, I guess my advice for users of the program is, um, yeah, to make it known to the uh, owners through, you know, Facebook or when they stop in to make a purchase that they would, you know, love it if they could join the network of participating places. We've, we've made it as easy as possible for um, new businesses to join on our website. It's a, uh, it's $25. They get, you know, listed on the website. They get 10 of the bicycle benefit stickers at the, you know, the half, um, half the price that a customer would, would purchase it for. And then they get signage and then they're, you know, they're free to come up with whatever discount reward works for them. So we, you know, it's, it's a quite, it's a very flexible program. So yeah, Jacob, I encourage you to, Tell all your favorite places that they should get on board with bike benefits and, th you know, and, and thank them. You know, I guess um, Gabby is an, is an ambassador for the program, but, you know, we encourage all the people that use the program to also see themselves as ambassadors, to tell their friends about the program, to, yeah, thank the employees and the businesses that do it. Um, yeah. We've, you know, we've, ki we've kept the price of the stickers at $5 and, you know, you only need to get a new sticker if you, you know, you lose your helmet or you, you lose your sticker. So we've made the program very accessible because we want to provide, you know, more value in the program for the, you know, the user and the business than, uh, than, the, you know, than they're signing up for. So to provide more, um, yeah, to get more than you've asked, you know, than you've given or something like that. And you Jacob, can, have you ever used the bike benefits outside of Burlington? Oh, wait, we can't. <laughs> well, I'm sure they'll comment if they have. Um, oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, I think purchasing the stickers is is pretty easy um, and stress-free, right? You can get it at specific businesses that are offering to sell them, as well as local motion, other bike shops around. Um, and because it is only $5 here, it's automatically paying for itself once you mm -hmm. move it for all the discounts. So I think that's a really yeah. cool aspect of that. 
Um, yes, yeah, so I guess that's something else that I'd like to mention is, you know, sometimes we get emails like, where's that $5 go? Um, so I, I'm one thing that I can do is I can break that down. So, you know, if a person purchases their $5 bike benefit sticker at City Market or wherever, so half goes to the business and then half goes to the bicycle benefits organization. Uh, some of the things that we do with it is, uh, you know, first of all, we have, you know, costs involved with our, you know, our window decals, the posters, you know, we're printing up these bingo cards soon. Um, we pay someone to do the website and the mobile version of the bike benefits website. But some other neat things we do is we've made it available for all uh, participating businesses that, um, have you know purchased at least 20 of the stickers um, to get a free bicycle floor pump so planet bike you know sells us bike pumps at cost so um, yeah if you go to the bike benefits website there's a little icon that shows a um, a bike pump so I, I I can't I can't remember the places within Burlington that have them available but there's several cafes that if you you know ask to use the pump they should be able to pull one out from the back that we've that we've given them for their employees and customer use. And uh, we also do like a business of the month program. So we take one of our businesses um, from around the country. I think City Market's the only place in Burlington that's uh, won the award in the past, but we give them $200 in order to, per, you know, to go towards new bike parking, um, to create like an incentive for their employees to, um, you know, to bike to work more, to create like some kind of game or something to increase ridership, or we'll purchase, um, yeah, all their employees' uh, bike lights that are riding to work. So those are, so we do that that award up by the month. So that's kind of, I don't know, those are some things that we do that are kind of fun to kind of further the, further the process of increasing uh, bike ridership. That's awesome. I didn't know that, that's cool. Um, all right, are we ready for the next question? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, also, Jacob says, no, he is not used it outside of Burlington, but next year. And he says, the reason I asked is because I plan on moving to Chicago next year and would love to help with some outreach there. I didn't see a ton of participating businesses on the website. So. Oh, that would be great. Ambassador, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so we uh, also, Oh, before you go further. So yeah, on our, on our bicycle benefits website, we have a link that says organizations and institutions, and that's directed at um, individuals too, that want to be ambassadors. So it, it's pretty much, um, it shows kind of how, how, an, how a person or a group can be successful in launching a citywide bike benefits campaign. So if there's, you know, individuals like Jacob, that's going to a new city, that's one of the things that has been really neat about the program. I never, I never wanted to live in a city and the bike benefits has allowed me not only to live in a city, but to get to know a city um, through, you know, visiting the various neighborhoods and engaging with the businesses. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, people, people like to talk about bikes. So it has allowed me to engage with the, the general public and bring something, you know, positive into a place. And, and it's also something that, you don't have to like wait for the Department of Transportation, you know, to do or the city to do. It's allowed me to actually, um, yeah, create something in, in collaboration with the biking community and the business community. So, yeah, that's kind of been neat. Okay, we're ready for another question. Okay, great. Um, okay, so Jack Hansen. Um, says, Ian, I worked with you to launch Evanston Bicycle Benefits M and I'm excited to be working with you again to boost Bicycle Benefits Vermont. Uh, what is the biggest or best discount that you're aware of that a Bicycle Benefits member business offers? Mm. Well, I think I think you're lucky. I think in uh, Burlington, you have some of the best. Um, I think two of the neatest ones is over at Myers Bagels. Not only do you get the buy six bagels, get six free with your bike benefits, but you get to watch them make their bagels there with the you know, the wood fired stove. Um, so I think that's a really great deal. There's a, there's a bike shop in Missoula, Montana that does free beer or berries and then in parentheses in season. So depending on what's, what's in season or what beers around, they just give you a free, a free one. 
And then uh, one of our new participating businesses in the Burlington area is a place called the Village Scoop in Colchester. So I encourage everyone to go up there on a bike date and enjoy the you, the buy one get one. So that's uh, those are yeah those are uh, I think some of my favorite ones. I like I like the buy one get ones because it encourages. I mean you can you can hand I mean a lot of people can handle two beers or two ice creams, but it kind of encourages people to go um, with another person to you know to take someone on you know a bike ride that might not you know, have gone outside of the city or go to a new place or to expose them to the program and how, you know, if you're riding your bike, you get some kind of like bonus. So I think, I think the buy one, get one is neat. Um, yeah. Um, and the village scoop is actually a part of the bicycle bingo that we're putting on this summer as well. And it was also named the best ice cream place in Vermont. Um, okay. Article. Now, if we didn't, if that's not enough to get people to hop on their bikes <laughs> and go check it out, but I don't know what is. Yeah, I'll link that uh, that article in the comments <laughs> um, because it was pretty cool, pretty exciting. Um, okay, great. So the uh, next question that we have is from Jason Stuffel, and he said, "How can we tie in bicycle benefits to also help shops that aren't on the list?" I try to mention that I, I biked or walked there when I make a purchase to help change the perception that people only arrive by car. That is, that is a very, uh, that is a very important uh, comment that was made. Yeah, I, I actually had a similar experience this week. Um, yeah, shop owner said that people that ride bikes don't make purchases. Um, and I, you know, I kind of feel opposite um, to that, you know, because the idea is that everyone, um, I believe in the concept that if you ride a bike once a week, once a day, once a year, you know, you are a bike rider. Um, so I think, you know, if you say bike riders don't make purchases, that's essentially like saying that no one makes purchases. So it makes no sense. So that, yeah, I guess my, uh, yeah, where I like to focus my, my attention is like, how can we increase the number of people that are, you know, arriving to store A, B, and C by bicycle. So, yeah, I think those conversations with business owners about, you know, how are you, you know, what kind of, are you, you know, do you have a, you know, a lock that a person can, you know, borrow when they, they pop in in case they forget their lock? Do you have a, you know, do you keep a bike pump around? Have you considered uh, converting your, you know, upfront, parking space to, you know, a little patio with a, you know, with a bike, you know, a little bike corral. So I think, you know, bike, I think one thing a customer can do is, um, yeah, is to demonstrate the studies that have, um, that are out there about, you know, the money that, um, that non-drivers are spending at businesses. So there are some studies out there that, that demonstrate, you know, maybe the people that um, do their shopping by bicycle um, spend less per shop, but overall they're actually spending more cumulatively. So yeah, bring, bring certain things to the attention of businesses about the value of encouraging people to bike and walk to their store, whether it's, you know, generating that conversation about disposable income you know, if you, if, you know, what do they say? Like, it's, I don't, I don't even want to throw out any numbers, but you know, there's, it's, it's hundreds of dollars a year that people need to spend on insurance and, um, you know, maintenance, car ownership. So, you know, if a person's riding their bicycle or they don't have, um, you know, car responsibilities, that's more money they can spend at those local businesses. So yeah, making, the, making that stuff aware. And then, you know, a lot of times if you, you know, spark an idea to a business owner, then they'll follow through with it, you know, whether it's offering bike benefits or keeping a pump around. So I think anything, you know, that will add value to their business and uh, yeah, help their bottom line will, you know, will benefit them. And um, yes, I guess that those are my thoughts and to make it easy for them. You know, as, as I mentioned earlier, business, small business owners have a lot going on. And larger businesses have a lot going on. So I think, you know, however you can make it easy for them to, um, yeah, to adopt, 
bicycle benefits or you know maybe maybe you could you know if they were looking to get bike parking you could you know bring some different options to the table you know or show them help facilitate it if it's something that has to be done through the city so i think i think we need to always look for those possibilities and opportunities um, in our day-to-day -day lives of how we can you know improve the you know the biking awareness um, i guess i tell people the best bike advocacy that a person can do is to uh you know when they go shopping talk to people that you know obviously didn't you know bike there um because you know oftentimes that person's going to be driving behind you the next time or it's going to be he's he or she's going to be driving behind um someone else so if you you know make a connection between um you know with biking to a person that you know doesn't ride a bicycle you're helping you're helping it for everyone um, so those are my thoughts on that um okay so we haven't gotten any new questions that i can see in the comments however um i had a question for you um Absolutely. and i was wondering uh if you had any thoughts of how do we get businesses and people to participate uh, in bicycle benefits safely and enthusiastically during a pandemic and what are the major differences that you've seen this year versus previous years when that hasn't been the case okay that's that's a really good um question you know and you know currently one thing that i've noticed is you know this time of the year um you know starting in the early spring we get a lot of businesses that uh, join the program we have a lot of organizations that you know purchase startup packs for their communities and and try to get things moving um yeah i think everything's kind of in in slow motion now so i think it's it is a challenging time to in, engage businesses and then you know with the you know with the changes in our country along with the you know the the covid um in a way it's it almost seems challenging sometimes to even have those conversations you know mm -hmm. it seems like you know there's so much going on in the world and the country that sometimes you know talking about bike benefits or asking a business to offer a discount at this time seems challenging um but it, you know i you know i also see it as a great opportunity you know a lot of these a lot of these businesses want to draw to draw traffic and a lot of people that are riding their bicycles want to you know see this small you know this bright spot in their life stay open you know they realize that the bicycle has given them you know some um you know, maybe help them physically and help them emotionally during this time. Um, so I think, I think as bike advocates, we need to capture that, um, you know, capture that and keep the narrative moving forward and, and recognizing that, you know, it's our responsibility to, you know, see that all these people that are, you know, getting on their bicycles for the first time in the last 20 years are people that are walking on the streets that we help, um, yeah, keep this energy level um, high. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you know transportation justice, um, you know, followed up the Black Lives Matter. Um, there's a lot, of, you know, there's a lot of issues in our country right now, and transportation, I feel like, is is right up there at the top. You know, if you if you're walking or biking, um, why should you? you're you know why should you be at higher risk so i think you know we have to um yeah see the value um of transportation see that it is significant and we also need to take this you know this um yeah take the pandemic as an opportunity to keep this um this conversation moving forward and i yeah i appreciate all the work that sustainable vermont is doing to yeah keep these conversations going um incorporate, you know, future candidates um, in the conversation and uh, prioritizing, yeah, prioritizing these, these valuable issues. So I think, I think the only, the best time is now, you know, so I mean, with, you know, with the bike benefits, engaging businesses, I mean, the worst a business can say is, you know, we're not ready for it, the timing's not right um or no you know but that still puts us at the same place that we were at so 
I don't think it changes anything. Um, but yeah, the, I think I think we need to keep people moving and uh, and and use this at, you know to help us. You know, this is I see this as a transportation revolution that's happening right now. You know, no one wants to send their kids on packed buses right now. Um, whether whether they're not whether or not they're safe, it, there's you know a perception there that people need to keep you know their social distancing and that you know people's stress levels are very high now. So incorporating the social distancing into physical activity is is very important. So okay, um, I think that's all the questions we've had. Um, is there anything else about the bingo that you wanted to say? Um, it is starting tomorrow. Um, so if you had any things you wanted to add. Yeah, so I guess, you know, we, speaking about the, you know, the slow motion thing, you know, it has, it, that has been one of our challenges putting this bingo board together is getting, um, getting responses for businesses. So we have been, you know, a bit slow with getting the uh, bingo card together. Um, I believe people will have the option to pick them up and to print them out. Correct, Gabby? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So we'll be we'll be using the Bicycle Benefits Facebook page, Bicycle Benefits Vermont Facebook page, to make posts about you know where the cards are available, um, providing the files so people can print them out, and they'll be um, yeah. So the prizes will be listed on the cards, but also will be we have some businesses that will be. Uh, providing perks and prizes throughout the game, which runs till September 12th. Mm -hmm. So we'll be making mentions of that. But yeah, I think it'll be it, yeah, it'll be really fun. The the spread of the board is is uh, nice. So there's short short little rides around town, and there's stuff um, a little further out. But the prizes are significant. Gabby, you want to tell people some of the prizes for the bike bingo? Sure. So I believe that there are um, Myers is offering a dozen bagels for a full bingo card. Um, I think that um, there are a few ice cream shops that are offering some free scoops. Um, we have a $15 gift card at Pingala Cafe. Um, and those are the ones that I can remember at the moment. Um, but we have about, we have 12 businesses involved um, and all of them will be offering, or most of them will be offering prizes. Um, and as Ian said, those will be coming out um, on the Facebook page. Um, and also the Sustainable Transportation Vermont page will be um, sharing some of those prizes and updates as well. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, since we only have 12 businesses that, you know, we didn't, weren't able to, uh, um, yeah, I get 24 as people see as a traditional bingo card. We're, we're going to set it up so if people complete like a slice of the pie, which will be patronizing three of the businesses, they'll be able to get like a row prize. Right. So it'll be really fun. So uh, I encourage everyone to play. And uh, I also encourage people to, yeah, if you're at a bike rack, you tell people about the bingo, you tell your, you know, you share the bingo and the bike benefits with your friends. I mean, it's nice to have a secret handshake, but it's also like, you know, it's, was that you, Gabby, that said that? It's nice to tell people about the secret Ford around the corner. <laughs> I didn't see that, but that is true. It is. Um, we, we also got a, a last minute question about the bingo uh can you win all the prizes if you fill the bingo card how do the prizes work i think i think we have it limited to three full card prizes right yeah i think so yeah so you get to pick based yeah. on your preferences right i think petra cliffs is offering a free a free day pass right. uh, i think lunigs is also providing a gift card so yeah i think the prizes can amount to like you know 40 or 50 bucks um, but it's great. It'll have people, you know, stopping in some of these neat places that maybe they've never gone before. So we hope everyone has a great time on it. Anything else, Gabby? Um, just when the, when will the cards be available? Some people are asking. So currently the, uh, the person that's doing the graphic design, he's working on them. So as soon as we have them, uh, the file ready, we'll post it so people can print it out and play. And we will post um, the locations that people will have be able to pick it up. Yeah, 
And there are also some Facebook posts um, on the Bicycle Benefits Vermont page and the Sustainable Transportation Vermont, um, where if you like it, uh, my fellow interns and I uh, said that we would deliver them to some pe people's houses if they aren't able to print them out. Um, and that's kind of a something that we decided to do um, all by bike, obviously. Um, oh, that's great. So, um, so yeah, definitely check no out. No spandex required for this game. <laughs> um, so definitely check out those posts and um, and keep an eye out for for cards and businesses involved. Right. Thanks for having me on the uh, the webinar. Thank you so much, Ian. We we were so happy to have you. Um, and well, nice to uh, hear from you, Jack Hansen. <laughs> he is he is commenting away there. Um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your Friday. Uh, and thanks again, Ian. Stay well. Okay.